I've seen a lot of people doing the clan generator challenge for a while now. In the past, I was planning on doing that, but I went on vacation and couldn't, and when I came back, I was delighted to find that it's still going as strong as ever. So I went back to the generator and I got Comic Clan, the lively and methodical. I really liked that description and decided to go for it. So here's Comic Clan. Before we get to the cats, here's the background on a clan. The clan got its name from a comet that fell to the center of their territory. This comet helps the clan contact their warrior ancestors. Because it is in the middle of their territory, they tend to be incredibly religious, and every apprentice gets an opportunity to go to the comet. Over time, the opinions on worship have changed in the clan. At times, the differences were enough that the clan fractured, and now several clans live around Comet Clan, who I may generate in future videos. Most of those clans are not hostile to them anymore, and have become diurnal over the years due to various reasons. Speaking of that, Comet Clan likes to be awake at night or nocturnal so they can see their ancestors at all times. They believe that when the comet fell, it hit a cat named Silverbelt, and she rose up to the stars, and the stars that they see is just her pelt. When you get to Star Clan, it is believed that she will judge you. That is all the background information needed before talking about the cats. If you are new to this channel, please think about subscribing. I regularly post both Wings of Fire and Warrior Cats content, so I'll never be bored. And to my current subscribers, thank you so much for supporting me, and we'll go on here without y'all. Now let's get on to the cats. So here is Brambling Star. She is the leader of this clan. She once trained to be a healer, but then she changed her mind. However, because of that, she's knowledge of herbs and will help out in the medicine den. The frequency in which she does this is increasing as she's led the clan for many moons beyond a cat's natural lifespan and is around 20. Because of that, her legs are starting to get less reliable and all of her senses are dulled. She's very hesitant when it comes to big decisions and also incredibly patient. She's overly sympathetic, which means that she gives the other clans the benefit of doubt when it comes to issues. She knows this is an issue, however, and will always listen to her clanmates whenever they feel like she's being conned by another clan. Next up is Slugheart, our deputy. As you can tell, Slugheart is not the most appealing of names. Slugheart was the least favorite in his litter, and he was the runt, and so his mother gave him a bad name. Despite that, he ended up being the best warrior of his litter. However, he kept on being ignored by his other clanmates as he was also half clan. As an apprentice, he ended up being invited to the clan by his father, Shadowberry, who we will get to in a bit. He helps Brambling Star out a lot when it comes to trusting the other clans. Brambling Star is practically a second mother to him. At this point, they practically lead the clan together, with Slugheart settling things with the claws and Brambling Star with words. After him is Raventail. Raventail, unlike most other healers, wasn't called by Star Clan to take that role. He was actually the cat with the most herbal knowledge in the clan when the last healer died, and so he was thrust into his position. Because of this, he feels incredibly insecure, and like he has not gotten Star Clan's blessing. Despite being a healer for moons, he only visits the comet when he has to, and even so, he often waits until the other healers or cat Sierra are asleep and then he slips away. Now, onto our first warrior. Laurel Fur's name is incredibly misleading. Though he sounds like a sweet Tom because of his flower name, he's actually incredibly selfish. He's pretty manipulative and will use anyone to reach his end goals. You may be thinking, oh, why hasn't he been exiled yet? Well, he's also very two faced. He pretends that what he's doing is Star Clan's will. He chooses his victims carefully, such as Slugheart back when he was new to the clan. Because of that, Slugheart is waiting to kick him out of the first opportunity. Laurel Fur also thinks he's much smarter than he really is. Though he's a smart cat, he often tends to monologue out loud when he thinks he's alone, so his schemes tend to be overheard. Or maybe that's what he wants everyone to think, that he is dumb, and he's secretly a mastermind waiting to pounce. Who knows? Our middle warrior is Lighttail. He's a bit distant compared to the other warriors, and Raventail thinks that he should have been made healer instead of him because of the amount of time he spends studying the stars. He's incredibly generous, but also a bit naive. This isn't the best thing to be when your brother is Laurelfer, a master manipulator, but somehow Lighttail's always managed to evade his grasp. He's also a bit of a romantic. He has several relationships around the clans with various Toms and she cats. He believes that Star Clan loves peace and love, and so he should spread it. We only have three warriors, surprisingly, and this is our last one. Grey Cloud is a fierce, motivated she cat. She is the best fighter in her clan and isn't afraid to use her claws. She is very stubborn and ambitious. She feels like everyone else in the clan is too trusting and that she needs to protect them. This means she's a bit possessive around those in her family. Slugar has told her to knock it off several times and she backs down, 
but she still glares and snarls. As an apprentice, she was a bit of an emo loner, but after she got a girlfriend, she calmed down. Our first apprentice is Aspenpaw. She is very laid back and aloof. It's hard to get her to take things seriously, and she will sometimes brush off important duties. She believes that everything will go right for her, and only if something really bad happens to her will that attitude change. She really likes the company of others and is an extrovert. The only problem is that sometimes she doesn't know the best way to act around other cats, and will act inappropriately, which will get her into trouble. She has started at least one fight at the gathering. She's also the sibling of our next cat, Rookpaw. Rookpaw is pretty intense and serious. She doesn't like to play around and is constantly looking for choice around camp, as if she has to prove her worth. She has a cat of few words and is more likely to answer a question not with words, but instead with hisses. When she does speak, it's often in deadpan or sarcastic expressions. She is brutally honest and not afraid to hurt anyone with it, as she feels like honesty is prized by Starkland. Her mentor is Laurelfur. Laurelfur was chosen to be her mentor because she is possibly one of the only apprentices that he would have trouble manipulating, as she is very sturdy. The only problem with this is Rookpaw is constantly annoyed by Laurelfur and may or may not murder him before her apprenticeship is up. Our next cat, Spiderpaw, is a glass half full kind of cat. He's cheerful, possibly overwhelmingly so. He is also a class clown and always wants to raise other spirits. He's a bit attention seeking though and that tends to get him into trouble. His mentor is Grey Cloud, the only cat who can put a damper on his boundless energy. He easily keeps up with her and has become fiercely loyal to her. He is a sibling for our next cat. Meet Nightpaw. I already have an OC named Nightpaw or rather Night Song, so trying to come up with a distinct character was a challenge. I decided to make her a healer apprentice because I haven't had one yet. Nightpaw was chosen by Starclan to become a healer at a young age. It actually happened the same day as her birth, and so she was named Nightkick to show her connection to the stars. However, Nightpaw doesn't like being a healer apprentice. She finds the duty stuffy and is even a bit distrustful of the stars. She is very adventurous, brave, and a bit selfish. She likes to use her herbal knowledge to hide her scent and sneak into the territory of rival clans. She's the most likely Cadence clan to start a war, and that's including Laurelfur. On to our first queen, Starlingstream. She is pretty much the mother of the clan. Raventail, Spiderpaw, and Nightpaw are all her children. She had more, but they died. Her mate is Slugheart. Personality-wise, she is very confident and does not doubt her own abilities as a warrior and cannot wait to start being one once again. She also loves to debate and is not afraid to speak her mind, leading to her getting in trouble with cats outside the clan when she perceives an injustice in their clans. Speaking of that, she is very judgmental, especially with cats outside the clan. Perhaps because of that, she tends to be more defensive of her husband, Slugheart, and dislikes the clan he comes from. Our final queen is Furstone. She is the mother to Aspenpaw and Rookpaw, who are almost warriors, so she is planning another litter. Her maid is Grey Cloud. She is very non rebellious and follows the code of the clan to the letters. She is quick to follow the leader, and that can lead her to being trampled over by other cats. She is very polite and hates seeing other cats argue, which often ironically leads her to argue with her den mate Starlingstream. She is very religious and feels like the reason why she hasn't gotten many kits is because Starkland is punishing her in some way, because as an apprentice, her mentor drowned trying to save her from drowning, and she believes she should have died and they should have lived. I mentioned this clan, Comet Clan Soul Elder once. This cat is Shadowberry, who is also the father of the deputy Slugheart. He got his name by poisoning a fox using yew berries. As a warrior, he was incredibly hardworking. He practically had to be forced to become an elder, and even now he does chores around camp. He had a half clan relationship as a warrior. Though those aren't forbidden, he was a deputy at the time, and when his kits were born, it created a scandal. He was demoted back to being a warrior. He wanted one of his kits, however, the mother refused to give him any. At a gathering, Shadowberry managed to get some time alone with Slugpaw and was told the rest of the clan was isolating him. Shadowberry invited Slugpaw into the clan with him, and he didn't return back to his clan from that gathering. Those are all the cats in Comet Clan. I might be doing another clan which lives around Comet Clan. Feel free to tell me whether this was interesting in the comments or not because of that. If you like this video, feel free to subscribe. I make Wings of Fire and War Cats videos pretty often and your support would mean a lot to me. And to those who have already subscribed, thank you for your continued support. I moved on here without y'all. Peace out.